assistant is from Kenya. Jambo, I believe a smile can change the gloom in the world. History, tradition, and culture make this country and its beautiful people so unique. There is no place like home, Kenya. The unity of my people is seen when over 40 tribes come together, no matter your race or culture, to spread love. From the moment I was crowned Miss World Kenya, I ceased to become Finale Galea and became an embodiment of my people, my country. I am Kenya. My purpose in life is to give meaning to my name, Finale. A name that did not have a meaning will mean responsibility and so much more to somebody else. I love my family. My mother is my heart, while my brother and sister, my soul. This was a little bit of my life and my Kenya. I can't wait to come to Sanya and meet the rest of the world. Kenya, what does it mean to be an embodiment of your people? Jambo, which means hello in Kiswahili. So hello, Frankie. Uh, to me, being an embodiment of my people begins with a uh, long history. They say that a piece of heaven was sent on earth and I call that home, Kenya. Kenya is a multicultural, diverse nation with over 40 tribes and I belong to the 44th. It's a feeling, Kenya, it's a feeling. You have to feel it and I'm so glad to be here at Miss World and share this feeling with so many other girls. To me, being an embodiment of my country means I represent them, their love, their kindness, their hardworking nature, and most of all, I am the love that they are. I am Kenya. For me, that means so much because I've always dreamt of representing my country. Kenya has given me so much love and I want to share that love in two ways. One is through my Beauty with a Purpose project, Hapana, and secondly, by being Kenya myself and being a representative of my country by the way I dress, the way I speak, and most of all, through my values. Asante, thank you. Now, time for Kenya. I'm Jambo. That is how we say hello in my motherland. I am Sharon Obara, a psychology major, and I am proudly representing the land of abundance and kindness, Kenya. Kenya is the home of majestic wildlife and the most innovative minds and talents in the world. The world's leading safari destination has inspired me to become the best version of myself. As a person who has passionately championed for the well-being of individuals living with neurological and cognitive disorders and related mental health disorders, I look forward to using this platform to bring about national and global change. I am proud to be the Kenyan ambassador representing the authenticity and richness of Kenya. Our culture is born from the beautiful tapestry that is filled with dance, tradition, language and heritage of 44 different tribes that thrive in harmony. That tapestry is what I hope to illuminate to the world as I represent my beautiful nation. I have grown in a family full of love and joy that fuels my unending compassion and motivation to relentlessly work to ensure that every member of the society is safe and hard. The intention is not only to destigmatize mental illnesses, but also offer solutions that ensure that our society continuously thrives. Because umoja ni nguvu, only together are we strong. I believe that together we can build a healthier and more inclusive future. A future where everyone has access to mental health care. Umoja ni nguvu. Join me as together we can take a journey of transformation and excellence. Karibu Kenya, natupatane Puerto Rico. Kenya, we absolutely love this outfit. Can you just tell us more about this outfit? We're matching. Can you tell that we're matching? Ooh, I love it's winning, your isn't neck piece, Vanessa. <laughs> my neck piece is an original from Kenya. Actually, my entire fashion taste and sense is a representation of Kenya. Back at home, we have two main languages. We have English and Swahili. However, we have 43 different tribes. And each of these tribes have different patterns, beadings, um, the cultures, and they are all represented in the fabrics and the beads. So me wearing this is a representation of 43 different tribes in Kenya. And as Kenyans, we believe that the world is ours to conquer. 
wherever you go, all around the world, you'll always meet a Kenyan. And one unique thing about them is that they'll always be wearing either a beaded, a beaded jewelry or a, a bracelet. We know that um, you can go anywhere in the world, but you will always find your way back home. That's what they represent. I love it. That's it's amazing. Great. I wish it came in a men's size. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kenya. Our next three contestants are Kenya, Belarus, and Ukraine. How are you feeling? Fantastic. Fantastic. That's what I want to hear. And it's sunny out there, so we must be happy, right? Yeah, very of happy. Course. Good. So let's get started with Kenya. From the majesty of the mountains to the soothing of the ocean, my land is Kenya. So warm, so wild, and so free. My name is Maria Wavinya, Miss Wild Kenya 2019, and I'm the face of Kenya to the world. Kenya is made up of 44 different communities woven together by a spirit of love, peace, and unity. The beauty of our land is our pride, the heritage of our people is our joy, and the strength of our nation is our youth. As an 18-year-old in a youthful nation, I know that our future is bursting with a promise, and now is the chance to prove ourselves. We live in the optimism of our hearts, and as the whole world watches, we are ready to fly. My name Wavinya means someone who is strong. I have faced my fair share of challenges and triumphed to be here today. With my life and with this title, I hope to inspire and empower every little girl I meet to be all they can be. This is who I am. This is where I am from. This is Kenya. Kenya, we just saw your video and in it you said that you faced some challenges as a kid. What were those challenges? Jumbo. The response to this is poor. So jumbo? Poor. Yes. Is that okay? Yes. You know, one thing, Vanessa, I know that we've all been through challenges. We've been through that one tough moment in our lives. You, my sister here from Ukraine and Belarus as well. And I believe that the pain, I can testify to this, that the pain that a child goes through can never be equated to any other pain in the whole world. You know, I'm so lucky. I was born and brought up by a very, very strong, God-fearing and hard-working mm -hmm. single mother. I loved her so much. I still do. I think I love nobody or nothing in this world more than I love my mother. But actually, she was not only my mother, but also my very best friend. But it was not only until I turned 12 that I had to say goodbye to my mother. That was the very last time I remember seeing my mother, and it was the very last time I had to say goodbye to my best friend. You know, at 12, every girl is transitioning from childhood to puberty. And at this moment, I believe that even Ukraine, Belarus, and even you, Vanessa, at 12, when you're just in a state of transitioning, you, you need your mother yeah. more than anybody else in this world. But at 12, I remember I had nobody to turn to. I had nobody to tell me that if you do this, these are the outcomes of it. I had nobody to tell me that if you don't do this, these are the repercussions. I had nobody to tell me that. And I remember life hit me so badly that at 12, I had to learn how to become an adult. Mm -hmm. Because living in a slum and all of a sudden going back to the village I really had to become an adult because even if I was so close to my family, you know, there is a difference between love and bond. For my mother was bond, for my family it's love. And for as much I'm not bonded to you, I cannot open up to you. So at this moment, I just had to learn how to become a mother because I do have a big sister with me. And she's mm -hmm. just two years older than me. And it doesn't really matter, okay, it's, it's not a must for you to be a biological mother, for you to be called a mother. It's just the responsibility that you take in as a person. I think you're very mature and you've learned so much from it. But now, can you tell me, what is your beautiful purpose about? 
My Beauty with a Purpose focuses on ending menstrual poverty and menstrual shaming. As I said, at 12, I had nobody to brief me on mm. how to go about menstrual education or anything of the sort. You know, for the last one month, as I was touring around my country, mm. it was so sad to see that some girls actually have to treat their bodies sexually in exchange for sanitary towels. I mean, they're just 12, they're just 10, 13. At this time, a girl is supposed to be in a classroom studying, but they can learn. They can learn. At 12, somebody, actually a girl just takes her own life because her female teacher rebukes her, you know, mm -hmm. because she soils on her dress with menses. So I took up this course not only because it was, it's not only my beauty with the purpose, but it's very, very close to my heart. And I joined um, with the Heels, Heels for Pads organization, mm -hmm. it's a social impact organization. We've been through, we've been to various schools around the country, talked to the ladies and the women, the girls there, empowered them, give them sanitary towels of three months worth. I remember I also auctioned my Miss World Kenya winning heels. For, really? Yes, and I raised, I managed to raise over $100 and I used this money to buy sanitary towels. I went to Kenya's most dangerous slum. We brought together the ladies, the girls, we talked to them and we gave them the sanitary towels. Oh, I think it's an amazing project, Kenya. Thank so, you. Thank you very much. And now